Hello folks, welcome back to the workshop. Today we have a mess. Bosch Hammer GBH 5 stroke 38D. And she looks to have a bit of an oil leak. Just a wee bit. I hope that's not got anything to do with it. Let's hope not. No, it couldn't be. Too short. It's just jammed in there. But she's a bit gunky. She looks like she's going to need a clean anyway. Main thing is, what's the motor like? Actually, it doesn't sound too bad. We just want to make sure she's not sparking. It's tight anyway. Sparking a little bit actually. Right, does she hammer? Sparking a little bit, but it's not too major. Okay, she actually has a good hammer, so she doesn't need a service. She's running, she's hammering, a little bit of a blue flash come out, coming out of it, but nothing major. Main thing is this oil leak. So this could just be a tidying up job. Could simply be the soil seal's gone up here and the grease has leaked out of it. Want to see how far the leaks the leak has actually gotten to. Sometimes they can go all the way down through the motor. If it's in there, you have to strip it apart, clean that out too. We'll strip this down first and see how far we have to go. You may think it's only a bit of dirt, wipe it off, keep going. But obviously, if the oil's coming out, there's no oil up on here. Now, there's no oil up there, it's not going to keep hammering for very long. You're just going to end up costing yourself more money because you then have to put a false service onto it. Plus, the simple fact that even if it, you fix the oil leak and left this. You can't really take this machine into somebody's house or a building site. It's going to make a mess. It has to be cleaned down. You're not going to be a very professional tradesman if you're taking that into somebody's house to draw a wall or something. You're going to end up making a bigger mess because of all this grease. That grease is going to heat up whenever the machine's running. Start dropping out. Going over the floor. Going everywhere. It needs to be gotten rid of. So I have to get this out. Get back to the old trusty rubber mallet. This one's dismantled many of the machines. Hold her up. Give her a few taps. She's everywhere. Oh, this is a bad one. Where did that come from now? That's the problem. That is literally 
coated everything all inside the motor. Not do the motor any harm, mind you, but still, when it's all grease like that, all the dust, dirt, and grit that this machine's exposed to just sticks to the grease. So eventually, this is going to pack out, become solid, bind up the armature or bind up the fan, cause more resistance on the machine, and end up burning out the motor. It's not the grease itself is going to burn it out. It's the actual resistance of all the crap built up inside. So that's all going to need to be stripped and washed out. Armature itself should be okay. You can see the way the fan was sitting on there, though. So that might have been the reason why she was sparking. That fan's sitting up tight against that dirt. It's all just oil and grease, but as the thing's been used, dirt, grit, dust starts sticking to the grease because the fan's actually sucking it up through here, and blowing it out the front of the machine. So all the dust that gets in through here ends up on the fan area here, which gets stuck to all the grease. So that keeps building up, and as it heats up, melts of this grease, which runs down, sticks more, so it starts to bind up. See the way it's smooth? That's because that fan has been actually rubbing against that. So I've been causing extra, extra strain on the motor. I'm trying to get that out and get it all cleaned. Hopefully it hasn't gone the whole way down through this motor housing. Look at that. Cement it on there. Not too bad, but I'm still going to have to take this field out, clean down in there. Pop that out. I'll just take out the brush holder as well. Bearing's okay. Prise up that holder. That's clean enough. I'll just save getting the brushes covered and cleaner. And we'll wash that out. We'll wash all that. Now Question is, where did the leak come from? As long as the casing hasn't gotten bust. Hopefully it's up here. You just don't know. It just migrates and goes everywhere. Because you're just assuming this is sitting like this. But it could be sitting in any direction. So you could be using it any way at all. Also with the oil seal here, just in case we wall, just replace that as well. And then 
inside's good. We don't want to get that dirty. There's no obvious sign of failure there. Seal is intact. Not sure. I was hoping to see an obvious break in that seal. I know it was definitely that. But if I can't tell for certain, I'm going to have to cover everything. There's two other seals on here. A lip seal and a felt seal. They are all fouled up as well with grease. So potentially, that could also have failed. If it was being used overhead or horizontally, it could have been leaking out of here and just running underneath and down. My guess is it's this one that's failed. But you just don't know. Anyway, that oil is fairly blackened. It also needs to be changed. So, But because we can't tell which seal failed to let all the oil out, we're just going to have to replace them all. Change that, this one, and these ones. Because we're changing these, we're going to have to pull this tool holder out anyway. So we may as well just strip the whole thing down, clean all the insides out, and replace the two O-rings on the piston and the striker as well. Just do a money service with all the oil seals changed. Right, parts washer. This is going to be a hell of a mess to clean up. Start with the easy bits. Got a full service I'm doing on this. I'm not going to take apart the tool holder. but it's a little bit worn. Have it out anyway, so we need to well change it. Grease when it gets contaminated like that there, it's very hard to shift. That's the actual grease from inside the hammer. Just wash it straight off to a degree. There's still like a residue left on. It's hard to get the whole lot of it off of it. Same as this one. Washed off fairly easy. Another problem. We 
it all gone. Needle rollers have collapsed. This was actually a good job with this. It won't even come out now. Too. We can replace them. You can see how easy that grease comes off that part. So at least the black residue off it. There's still a greasy, oily residue left on it. But it's clean. And the likes of this. Does not want to come off. Probably more so the paint as well. Binds on to it or something. But it is a torture to shift. Another good soak and let it sit. Let's see if that loosens it off. Plastic bits. It really sticks whenever the dirt or grit gets onto it. the loose stuff off and then we'll go back over it with thunners to get the remainder even just the brush look it binds up onto everything just an oily slop Good for gears, but not great for cleaning off. Now for this really bad stuff. This is actually paint thinners. And that will strip down that oil, no problem. But it ain't good for you. Whoa, get rid of the grease. Which we need to be wearing a mask because this stuff is lethal. See what I mean? Just eats through it.
Right, all cleaned out. And new parts and stock. Put the badge back in in case I forget it. Right, first things first. Front seals. And this loop seal is down. That the one side. New needle bearings. New piston o ring. Striker o ring. This big seal is up on here. You shouldn't have to put any sort of silicone or gasket sealer onto this. This isn't a round seal, it is actually oval. Generally when they fail, it's because they're either nipped or they're broken. Now that's sitting in properly. It is actually sitting up quite high. It was very hard for that o-ring to not get a good seal. This one as well. Some Loctite. You don't want these backing out. Just a dab. That to one side. Next up, lip seal for down here. Press that on. Put your C clip on top of it. We just get everything else on the heavy grease on the bottom needle rollers nice fresh ones steel bush for your clutch crank itself clutch there's a steel washer underneath that crank that's already on there Push on your clutch now these bits you don't need to worry so much about getting grease onto them because those are going to be taking on oil anyway 
whenever this is put together, I'm going to flood this with oil. So that will get plenty of lubrication. Set that on there. Bit of grease in your crank. That's sitting this way. Piston in. Try to keep that all together. Drop it on as one piece. And we can build that dry, but we can't build this dry. This needs to have grease. And plenty of it. Yeah, man. Need that first for screwing your handle onto. Not gone, but I'll just replace that. It's always the first bearing to go, so as well put on a fresh one. Now you're building it like this, don't forget to get everything a wee twist to make sure your armature is 
slides up between the gears. You don't want to be banging it on and hitting the gears off each other. Make sure they're meshing as you're pushing it down. Again, little dab of Loctite, do no harm. Not changing the brushes, they're not even halfway worn, so it'll be all right. Make sure everything turns. Now we're just about done. Now, there's an Bosch oil, it's not a grease that goes onto this thing. That number there ending in 019. If you're topping it up, you put on about 50 millilitres. But if you've stripped it down like this, completely washed everything out, and there's no grease or oil left inside, you put on about 60 ml. Or roughly, if you're not measuring it, that much. Change lever or change gear. If it's forward, you're in hammer only with no rotation. Midway, you're hammer only, but you can move your chisel around. When you're fully back, you're in boring. So hammer and rotation. So have your change lever on top, matching the mode. I always put it into hammer only on rotation. Drop it down. Just make sure that's engaged by changing your lever. That should be good. Screws on top again. A little dab of Loctite. It's not hard to cross thread these, so don't use the drill straight away. Get a screwdriver, go left hand first, 
till you hear it click put it into the original thread again because these are self tappers and if you just go start driving them down they could miss the original thread and start cutting a new one so you're just adding up stripping out the alum in your housing and making more work for yourself so we'll left hand first till you hear it click into the last thread because these would have cut their own thread whenever they've been installed they don't tap these machines so each of these screws are going to be an identical thread get them started I'll finish them off quickly with the drill two screws go on for the handle and for your tool holder with chisel grease and your tool stops And rebuild your chuck. These ones are torture because you have to hold the sleeve down. Just putting this on. Lastly, put your side handle back together. Even that had to be cleaned. That should be her. Hopefully she works. Because she's quarter to six on a Friday evening. And I need to get home. Oh, she's making the right sound. Make sure she makes a hammering sound now. Lovely job. One Bosch hammer, GBH 5 stroke 38D with a bad oil leak. Whole machine and motor covered, caked, and dirty black oil and grease and grit. Stripped, washed out, new o rings, new seals, a new bearing, and new grease. And that's her, gets her up and running again. Right, folks, it's Friday evening. It's 10 to 6, time to get this written in, marked in and out the door, get the workshop a wee quick wash down before I head home, put my feet up and spend the next few hours editing this video so I can post it later on. Thanks for watching folks, let us know in the comment section what you prefer as well, I've just been wondering. Doing the long videos takes quite a bit of time, do you prefer the long videos with a bunch of different machines being fixed? Or would you prefer them shortened down so I'd have several repair videos just with shorter content? Or would you like them like this here, just a dedicated one-off video in long format? Let me know in the comment section below. Let me know if you're enjoying the videos. Thanks for watching. Give us a wee like and follow if you enjoyed it. And don't forget, 
hit the notification button at the bottom and if you want to become members to support the channel please do thanks for watching folks cheers have a good weekend